So let's talk a little bit about uh, a treatment. Clearly, treatment goals are to reduce the edema, to reduce the excess fluid volume, and to make the patient much more comfortable and able to have full activity. You'd also like to increase the pumping ability of the heart. Uh, sometimes, <clears throat> if it's, for example, in the patient we talked about in the last lecture, somebody with aortic stenosis, taking away the stenotic valve and putting in a good valve allows the ventricle to recover. Um, in other settings, if it's due to severe ischemia, lack of blood flow in the heart, coronary bypass or angioplasty may improve the blood flow in the heart and may, not always, but may improve the function of the ventricle and again lead to resolution of symptoms. And there's a variety of drugs that help increase the removal of fluid from the body. For example, diuretics that increase renal excretion of water and salt will reduce the excess volume of salt and water in the body and often lead to marked improvement in the symptoms. Patients with heart failure, particularly new heart failure, <clears throat> require hospitalization. They require a number of tests to determine why they're in heart failure. And they also require a number of drugs um, that are used to improve, if possible, the function of the heart and to decrease the work of the heart and to increase fluid and salt excretion. And what you do, this uh, uh, step diagram is, is a complicated one. I'm not anticipating that anybody needs to learn this uh, uh, right away, but it shows you as the heart failure increases, the aggressiveness of our therapy increases. So in the beginning, we use uh, ACE inhibitors, uh, that is they vasodilate the arterioles, they decrease the blood pressure a bit, and they decrease the work of the heart. In a sense, what we're trying to do is rest the heart, make the heart's job, the left ventricle's job, a little easier. But as you go along, there's a variety of other interventions that are used, um, both improving blood flow, for example, with uh, angioplasty. Um, we also use drugs um, that rest the heart a little bit by decreasing the heart rate, beta blockers. Um, and then eventually, you may even progress to devices that increase the pumping ability of the heart while you're getting ready to do something uh, more aggressive, for example, change a heart valve, <clears throat> or even in the most severe stages, do a heart transplant, give the patient a new heart. It's important that patients have lifestyle changes, particularly with the milder forms of heart failure, because what we're trying to do is prevent heart failure from progressing. So what are those lifestyle changes? Clearly, somebody who's obese, you've got a lot of extra weight around. If you have a big belly that has 40 or 50 pounds of extra weight, it's like you're carrying a 40 or 50 pound knapsack on your back and you're asking the heart to do that extra work you can imagine that's a bad idea. So dieting and reduction of obesity is important. Number two, cutting back on salt, because the more salt you take in, the compensatory mechanisms of the body hold on to that salt and of course increase blood volume. So restriction of salt. It turns out that regular, particularly in the beginning supervised, exercise or physical activity actually improve the whole cardiovascular system and enable patients to do more work with the same cardiac output that they had before. Uh, so, uh, and of course, stopping things like cigarette smoking, which are damaging to the blood vessels and <clears throat> which can cause acceleration of atherosclerosis, just as in we talked about in patients with a heart attack or coronary artery disease. There's a whole variety of lifestyle changes, and often these are integrated between the cardiologist and a good cardiac rehabilitation program. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.